and welcome back to the Donahue Show. We're delighted that you can join us for a, another fun-filled half hour of political <laughs> chatter, uh, talking on the local scene right now. Joining me, as always, former State Senator Cal Potter, Professor Tom Paneski, math department here at the University of Wisconsin Sheboygan, and Ken Risto, who has some obscure position as a social <laughs> studies uh, <laughs> curriculum assessment instructor, um, yeah. assistant, and so forth. So. Um, we're having His Holiness would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are interesting times in the city. Uh, Mayor Prez has been in office about 110 days, 120 days or so, and I, I think there have been some interesting things going on. Uh, I thought we would talk about it. I'm just very interested in the Chamber of Commerce spectacle, if we can call it that. It was a, a most interesting process by which a fairly long-term, long-standing, but kind of quiet uh, organization uh, really has experienced some fairly dramatic changes. Uh, uh, what do you think? An eight-to-eight -eight vote? Uh, the mayor exercises his uh, power and um, votes to terminate the contract? Good idea? Bad idea? Well, I think it's something that was boiling for a while and people didn't recognize it. I think the funding mechanism, whereas in the city provides a very high percentage of the total budget, was something that probably people were wondering whether they were getting their buck, bang for the buck for quite a while. And when push came to shove, when the contract was up, people said, let's walk. And I, I think it's something that the chamber is going to have to start addressing as far as the funding mechanisms, uh, getting in other communities to participate. And then I think the city probably, as the mayor has indicated, uh, they're willing to relook at it. But I think a more widespread funding mechanism is something that needs to be looked at. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I thought it was a dumb idea. <laughs> Basically, I thought it was dumb. I talked about it all week. I thought he had an What was dumb? Cutting his veto. Or his... Uh, uh, his tie-breaking vote? Tie-breaking vote was a dumb, a dumb vote. But uh, Tell us what you really think. Uh, that's what I really thought. I mean, well, I thought the uh, shared services, you talk about shared services, he can't even work with the chamber. Uh, they, they've offered some suggestions on how to work, uh, you know, like you said, though, I don't know how long it was brewing, mm -hmm. but they offered suggestions on how to uh, resolve the issue prior to the vote, and then when it came down, he votes to not fund. Uh, and where's his opinion? Where's his shared services kind of emphasis? Uh, he's saying we're going to go it alone. We don't need you, basically. And how he's going to how's going to deal with the county now? In retro, and after the fact, it looks like things may have worked out. So maybe. You know, the proof is in the result of the pudding afterwards, and when it's all done, said and done, I don't know that the city's going to get a, going to do any better than the chamber with their own uh, uh, efforts. But uh. well, I did see the PowerPoint presentation that the mayor's office had put together, talking about the contract and the performance on the contract, and at least by what the mayor's office was saying, there were some fairly substantial failures of the chamber to just perform the tasks or the the, the, um, the agreement that they were going to promote the city. A lot of things hadn't been done and, and so forth. So uh, what surprised me was the speed at which this happened. Uh, I, that was, uh, I mean, in terms of city bureaucracies moving quickly, it seemed to be fairly supersonic speed. Uh, you know, uh, what, two, three weeks from start to finish? Maybe it was a month, I don't know, but uh, it, it seemed pretty dramatic to me. I was pretty surprised. I thought, I thought they'd give the chamber another year to, to get their act together. Uh, when the chamber offered a, not an olive branch, but when they offered a, a one year, mm -hmm. uh, let's try this another year, you know, let's put on the table what you're unhappy about, let's see if we can work this out. I thought that was what the, I thought that's what the council would, would bite on, but uh, I was really surprised about the, the vote. There wasn't the typical kinds of coalitions on the floor. And I was surprised how some business leaders really sided with the chamber and some really had had their fill with the chamber and how it all worked out. So it was, it was pretty interesting. But it, it's been playing into the sort of the theme of this, this mayor, which is, you know, churning up the water, making change happen. Um, so I, was, I wasn't too surprised how he voted when it came down to a tie, but I was very surprised it came to a tie. I thought, uh, I thought, they, I thought they'd give him a year, another year to get there. There's, there I together. think the idea of building a, a visitor center is something that this community needs. Uh, I, when I was in the Senate, uh, there was a time when Manitowoc built their facility, oh, okay. and that's very highly utilized. Is uh, it? Yes, people stop there looking for directions for 
all manner of things, and I think uh, Sheboygan could use that, particularly with the tourist trade that we're, we're now experiencing with the golf courses and so on. I, I think it's good to have a, a central place where people can come right off the I road. So I would hope the city and the county can get together on something of that nature. Well, see, I think that that's the key. I, you know, I don't know as the city of Sheboygan whether it can stand alone as far as tourism. I mean, virtually a good chunk of the reason why people come here have got very little to do with the city of Sheboygan. But I, mean, I think that the was golf the courses are outside the city of Sheboygan. Road America is outside the city of Sheboygan, and it'll be interesting to see how that all ends up playing out. But I think there was some wish to emphasize the fact that the city itself can be the destination point, and that the city of Sheboygan is not just there as, as an afterthought, and then you go, you know, after the golf courses and so forth. Go find a place to eat. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, and I think the city, in my opinion, when you take a look at our waterfront, of course the Arts Center to me, which can be set down in downtown Manhattan in Shine as an incredible institution. Mm -hmm. um, Blue Harbor, obviously. There are all sorts of things that go on that I think if you had a real city-centric focus with a highly skilled uh, public relations firm, well, I mean, I think that's what, what the idea is, and it'll remain to, to, to be seen. But I was on vacation last week, but getting back and reading the newspaper headlines, it, it, it certainly seemed that the doors of communication are still open between mm -hmm. the city and the chamber. So um, we'll come back in six months, and um, if we're all inundated with, with tourists and so forth as a result of the, <laughs> of yeah, the brave get, new world of... You get on, a, you get on a, a airlines and uh, read an airline uh, magazine. It says, come to... Uh, Kohler, Wisconsin, and golf. They're the ones that are advertising. Of course, they've, you know, they're the ones that are promoting us. Uh, so I don't know that we, the money we generate, uh, that we want to do it ourselves. Is, you know, Sheboygan as a destination is the main destination. I don't think so. But wasn't that one of the reasons? I mean, isn't that what we touted Blue Harbor as? We were going to make Sheboygan a destination point. Now, of course, there'll be Spaceport. Do you, yeah, that, um, that, yeah. I mean, that's a fascinating idea. Uh, mm -hmm. the, I, I remember the aquarium idea some years ago and where down on the corner of uh, 8th and uh, Indiana, wasn't it? Didn't, uh, there was a, an oh, effort, wow. a, a thought to, to mm -hmm. build a, um, an aquarium, a, freshwater aquarium. Right, and, and, and that went nowhere. Yeah. But the spaceport idea, I, I did l take a look at the plans and it, it looks like a, a fun plan. And it seems that in terms of development, that that particular area with the, the warehouse building across the street, it seems like that is an area that needs to be brightened up a little bit. And so I, I'm thinking we can actually make Sheboygan a destination point. And, um, it, and it truly has one of the best waterfronts, I think, in the world. Certainly nicer yeah, than Milwaukee Michigan, well, or not Manitowoc. Nicer than Gary, Indiana, I agree. Nicer than Manitowoc. <laughs> <laughs> nicer than Milwaukee. <laughs> and accessible. You know, yes. does the, the path along the lake and, and all the rest. Speaking uh, of accessible, I loved the article in the paper where Paulette Enders has described the pedestrian bridge as the new Calatrava of Sheboygan. The new... Sorry, she's monument. Got, she's got to get. She's got to get the award for the most oratorical overreach uh, for this week, doesn't she? Well, uh, we're referring, of course, to the <laughs> great wing spread uh, at the uh, Milwaukee Public Art Museum, uh, built at a modest cost of what seven hundred fifty million dollars, and having yes. bankrupted the museum, as far as uh, most people can tell. But um, I did see the the uh, uh, schematic drawing, and, uh, and uh, it looked fabulous uh, in the in the newspaper. It looks. And it has the little wings. I guess that's the, the Calatrava um, connection. But I thought <laughs> we probably won't beat out the Milwaukee Art Museum on, <laughs> on that point. But uh, it's the a good idea. It's a good idea. Functionality. Yeah. I think you need to tie the two sides of the river together. People need mm -hmm. things to do. And uh, Blue Harbor, as nice as it is, it's just not going to be the destination in itself unless you really hung up on water slides. Other than mm -hmm. that, you need to have people get access to the art center and other by foot. And, and tourists are usually, being a tourist myself, and I, I love being a tourist, I love to walk sure. in, in a city. And my husband and I actually decided to walk to Blue Harbor and the trek around the peninsula there while being good for you does take so, a, yeah, are we a, there yet? <laughs> <laughs> a fair amount of time. It is. And, yes, uh, it is. So, so that's, uh, that's interesting. Well, 
Was that state funds or federal funds? Well, this is this huge windfall. Um, I mean, if the money does come through, or pork, as the case may be, pork. from the Republican Congress. Mm -hmm. Thank from you, sir. It, Representative Petrak. Representative Petrak. <laughs> I had to get him that. to thank for. <laughs> we we absolutely do, and I love it how these Republicans spend recklessly. I mean, it's just um, it, it, it's to the benefit of Sheboygan. Yes, it's it's just wonderful. Yeah. But that twenty five million dollars is an extraordinary sum of money, quite frankly, and if. I mean, I've heard discussion, I don't know what you guys think, but we can't spend that amount of money on trails and... Well, the and bridge will put a good dent. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What's the projected cost of the bridge again? I remember reading 4. it last 8 night. Million. 4.8 million. 4.8 million. Who, uh, um, I'm a little ignorant about this, who's going to decide how that 25 million is going to be ultimately slid? Is that going to be it's spent in the legislation? Is that is going to be the state? No, some of it it is. comes to the county. Yeah, and some of it's already earmarked for trail development, bicycle trail. Okay, okay that's what I, I thought. Think, yeah. But I, I think, think Shannon, isn't Highway 23 expansion is part of that as well. I don't think yeah, so. I think you're right. I think you're right. Well, there isn't a lot left in Sheboygan County right. anymore. You know, yeah. it'll, it'll be west of Plymouth when the present construction is complete. I was pretty sure it was for conservation trails, bicycle trails, pedestrian enhancements, and not motorized traffic. I could be wrong, though. Mm -hmm. But Shannon Hayden, who's the planning person for the county, as I understand, is going to have the, the main responsibility for shepherding the money. So. And she and Paulette Enders, I, as I understand, have a pretty good relationship. So, so hopefully that uh, will the county board and the uh, common council have any input, whatever, in those decisions? I presume. Yeah. Well, that'll make it interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll make it, it very interesting. But just the thought: so much money coming in, and how do you get it spent? But who am I to talk about the wisdom of the federal government and how it decides Porks things to? things up. Yes. <laughs> Well, you know, it's a pig's fanny pork, and you know, I think, you know, the answer is, well, we'll just move right along. Um, the, um, <laughs> as long as this TV show is on, and who knows how long that is before the censors grab us and pull us off. Um, is there the any police? money for community uh, television in that bill? <laughs> <laughs> is there community television money? We think that there I know should that, be. I know the Republican Party is scrutinizing public television, but I'm not sure about no, the, the tentacles of the federal government will reach all the way into the, into the studio. Well, there you go. Probably coming down the fireplace, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. But Tom, that would be quite the trick. Tom, Tom, yeah, <laughs> with the face of George Bush. Tom will be keeping a close eye on that for us. Um, the police station is ever with us. The uh, final study, the alleged final study, has come out in favor of the North 23rd Street site. What do you think? It doesn't surprise me. I think most studies have kind of pointed to that. And I think there's the always the point of cooperation with the county, whatever degree might occur at 23rd Street, at least it's, it's, it's the focal point for the topic. Mm -hmm. And so I think things are pointing in that direction very substantially. Well, here's my idea. <clears throat> Because there's some question now about the fire station on the south side, and really, truly, it's someday the mayor will join us and we'll talk about the state of city finances, but we're pretty broke. I mean, the, the credit card is pretty much maxed out. If the Consumer Credit Counseling Agency worked with municipalities, we'd be uh, one of their top clients. But I think that the um, uh, idea, now here's my idea, that wonderful fire station downtown, which is so nice and old-fashioned, and when my kids were in preschool, we toured it, and they didn't let them go down the fire pole, but the fire pole is still there. Expand the police station to the north, take down the fire station, remodel it or whatever, close that fire station and move whatever forces were there out to the south side. Good idea. Brilliant. Because Another oratorical <laughs> overstatement, but it must be the summer. It must be yeah, the. I, but I don't know if it's brilliant. Well, okay. I like it. <laughs> but, I mean, but you know, they've the, talked about the site right about city behind Hall, City Hall. City Hall is the second, is second on the list. So they, Twenty Third Street was first, and then City Hall was second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you throw that piece in there, does that lift that? And what we could do is keep um, raise that to the top. We could keep. Choice. We could keep a small band of, of firefighters at, uh, at the police station for EMT calls and, I mean. It <laughs> no EMT calls. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what they're doing. Yeah. Uh, the vast majority of their business right now. But I think that yeah. uh, 
I kind of like the idea, and um, and then we solve the firefighting or the fire station because I think there are some equitable issues about getting the fire station more south. Um, well, the, the announcement this the last week that Warner is going to put put 160 new houses on the south side that's mm -hmm. growing leaps and bounds in the southerly direction. Eventually, I think you have to recognize you need a fire station there. And it's too bad that we in, just talking in terms of shared services that there isn't something. The town of, as I remember, the town of Wilson, the village of Oostburg, the town of Lima, and another municipality have tried, and in fact do have shared volunteer fire services for the southern part of the county. But as those houses go out further south, to have some sort of arrangement or shared services, even with a volunteer fire department, to really maximize the amount of fire service that's involved, you know, makes some sense to me. Mm -hmm. But, but firefighters, twenty percent of their calls now are fire. The other eighty percent, the other eighty percent are really emergency response. You know, getting there just before Orange Cross does, and it's it's an interesting issue. That's and you know, Sheboygan was unique for a while in having the only police ambulance service, and we finally got it into the private sector. And a lot of the communities have their EMT and medic, uh, medical. Uh, paramedics in the fire department because that's the tradition. Mm -hmm. Sheboygan has uh, moved it a little bit out of that traditional mode and having it in the private sector. So I mean we could lead the way and just say hey fire departments don't need to deal with that anymore. There's some basic issues they need to deal with. I mean jaws of life and extrication from accidents and they're going to have to be on the scene. But uh, if it's only 20 percent, uh, the fire suppression is only 20 percent of their business, that's their main function. They could reduce. Well, you also have to remember that one of the things that's been very successful is the, the almost daily um, inspections of buildings to, to improve safety. Yeah. So, and I was right, they've been successful. <coughs> so, successful. At, at what point do you, yeah. you start uh, hindering the success of your success by cutting back? Well, I think fire inspection is clearly, I mean, I, I don't know what the fire chief would say, but it's my understanding that fire inspection, there's a direct relationship sure between is. good inspections and fewer fires. Right. And um, it, it certainly is not 100% by any means as, you know, we don't have folks coming into our private homes, but um, those of us who are in businesses are well acquainted with the inspectors mm -hmm. who come through and they're serious people and and they have a serious mission and so I, I and it is interesting I mean just in terms of how we think about delivery of services mm -hmm. or should the fire department in fact take on EMT work um, I was on the police and fire commission for five years and I will tell you that uh, we had to interview all the, the potential firefighter applicants the vast majority of them had EMT certification and some of them had actual paramedic certification. And it's just, you don't hire firefighters anymore who are not EMTs, it appears, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from the experience that I had interviewing, gee, I bet 100. And uh, so it's... Uh, well, what you get is firefighters uh, with the paramedic experience uh, uh, have a second job with Orange Cross. <laughs> so they work on the city and they work on Orange Cross. So they have really two jobs. Mm -hmm. So they use their experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but it that doesn't, still doesn't mean they should be uh, doing para, uh, paramedic stuff. Is this something that's on the public's mind? Is it is this discussion coming up at the various budget meetings that are going around, the input meetings that are going around town? Well, we can segue right into that. Um, as you know, the mayor is ha uh, hosting 16 listening sessions around the city, uh, one in each ward or two in each district, um, and with the purpose of getting input from citizens about how this, what the city's doing well, what the city's not doing so well, and, and what issues are important to people. And I've been a part of that process. It's really been fun. I've facilitated now, I think, four of the sessions that have been held. Um, and it's a most interesting discussion. There are a number of people who come to every session, and 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 are lively and in, certainly enjoy talking. And But at each session that I've um, been involved in, um, there are six, seven, eight, ten, uh, fifteen, up to fifteen, what I call regular people, 
who come in and just express uh, their opinions on a wide variety of topics. Um, I would say there's little criticism of the police or fire departments. There's a lot of concern about the cost of the police station. And I think now that the <coughs> figures have been brought up about how relatively inexpensive the Janesville Fire Department was to build, you know, obviously that's going to be an issue. And there's no money to build anything. I mean, I there say, is no money to build anything. Won't this station pretty much take us to the $70 billion or whatever the cap is on, on debt? Um, we're well, over. The 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 debt limit right now we're within three million dollars I think. Tom, have you paid closer no, attention to that? Know. I thought yeah. the number was what was the total debt limit? Seventy. Seventy, 70 billion. Um, seventy million. Rather? Yeah, um, a seventy percent of the equalized. Ah, uh, that's what it is. Um, that's where the number seventy the, is. The, okay. The equalized. We are at three percent. You we you can borrow up to five percent of your equalized value. The the city has had a good self-imposed 3% limit, and it's now within 70, I'm sorry, it's very, very close to the top of that 3% limit. It could, also, it could always vote to rescind and go to the 5% of equalized value, but again, then people's taxes go up, and, and that's really not a viable. I've the news recently of higher property values in Sheboygan yeah, right. will yes. be a big factor in saving that uh, three percent figure i think exactly yeah. exactly so i think um, um what's on the mind of citizens i think is how efficient the city is at doing business and and i think that's those are always really good things sure. you know private businesses that succeed are those that are efficient sure. And, and always thinking about that, and sometimes bureaucracies just tend not to think about it because you know everything is pretty steady. And so I think these are unsteady times with respect to that, and I think citizens are responding to that. One of the it nice also gives the mayor an opportunity to talk about his challenges. For example, gas, right. <laughs> three dollar oh, yeah. gas for for the police department Part and other right. anybody who's uh, got a, right. a piece of equipment running on a municipal level is just killing them. Most municipalities are close to their their. Uh, total budget amount already for mm -hmm. the year. Mm -hmm. And while obviously with prices still going up, this is going to be a major problem for, for most uh, budget crunchers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The school district is pretty smart. It buys um, petroleum in futures. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there's always a risk that the price will go down, but that's a smaller risk probably than the, as opposed to right. the price going up. So, and I don't know if the city and county do that as well. But it's the the district has been relatively successful in, in saving at least some some amount of money but by doing that. In any event, the citizens' budget process goes on. The mayor um, has um, charts that he briefly goes through at the beginning of each session that I have found very informative about where the money comes from, where it goes, how each main department how their budgets have either gone up or down over the last few years. The, the fairly extraordinary difference between revenues and expenditures and how that gap has just been widening as time goes on and then just shows how we've made a fairly extraordinarily, extraordinary leap up to near the top of that debt ceiling. And um, so uh, it's, for me at least, it was an enlightening experience to, to learn about all that. But, I think the process is a good one. What happens next is that citizens are able to complete a, a survey on the, on the web. If you haven't been to the city's website lately, it's great. It's revamped, and it's pretty interesting. Um, they'll have the <coughs> surveys in um, the library, I think, and at City Hall, and uh, trying to get more input from people and, and, and really try to provide as much information as you can for the for the council. So Jack Westfall from the school district has been pretty helpful in putting all of that, I shouldn't say pretty helpful, very helpful in putting all of that information together. So so we'll see. Any of you guys been to any of them? No. Have not. Have not. You should, well, of course I just you're... think the mayor probably watches the show and he'll probably uh, we'll give him his input. When he, whenever he gets there, we'll put him right here. And we'll, 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 we'll give him our input. And, we'll and, uh, budget for him. We'll bring him here. Yeah, and we promise to do that. Yeah, I've gone online and done the survey. Have you so done it? yeah, and it it's actually is it works really very very well. It's 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 identical and almost identical in format to the type of survey used in the district too when we started 
looking at educational issues, not budget issues. That's what we're going to be doing this year, too, is doing budget prioritization process. The same process, Jack's in charge of that one as well. Um, and we'll see where that, that heads, uh, heads to. Um, but um, what are people dissatisfied about? You, you've done four of them. Uh, I have to say. Besides the police station cost. Yay or nay, uh, people are unhappy about uh, what really comes up a lot is public works. Is, you know, two guys getting out to, you know, mow the lawn and one standing next to the truck. And I don't know if any of those things is true, but that is a recurring theme. Um, people, I think, are, are I think they, they, it's clearly like the city and that they're happy to be here, but they think things could be more efficient. It's transportation and, like bus drive, buses? Well, the, the, make it? the bus issue is always there. Okay. And, and it's a tough one because, um, uh, as I understand it, the big buses are more efficient to run. That's what the federal government will give you money for. Mm -hmm. And because, People are talking, we need smaller. I'm almost thinking, you know, Mary Lynn Donahue has great ideas about how to run the city. Let's just have big vans, and you, you know, like a handy care van, because except for school buses, you know, and when schools are out, you have kids get on the city buses and they're pretty busy. That's about it. And could you handle a dispatch kind of center where people could ride, uh, and it wouldn't have to be a door to door taxi kind of thing, but you could have just a number of, you know, the jitneys uh, kind of service that you have in bigger cities and, and just pick up people that way because it's clear there are a number of particularly poor people who are absolutely dependent on the bus service. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that we can just say without a care, let's get rid of the buses. We can't do that. And the cost of transportation, as you've seen in, in New Orleans, the people who couldn't get out are people yeah. who didn't have cars and they couldn't afford to get out. And they were yeah. poor. It's, they're poor yeah. people. And yeah. the cost of a car and the cost of gasoline is not going to be anything that's changing in the near future. Exactly. But yeah, that's true. I think people could be creative. You don't have buses in Sheboygan Falls, right? You don't have buses in Plymouth. No. Or do you? I don't think so. The Falls is, is served by the Sheboygan transit system. Oh, we service that. Okay. Yeah, but not real extensively. If, no. no. Yeah. So, so I think that those are some of the issues that... Um, that people are, are upset about. Uh, it's been good. Uh, we have older people come from time to time. They get a little defensive sometimes. <laughs> like, you know, it's hard to have your, t you know, criticized. But come to a budget session. We're the, at the end of this session, and uh, we'll talk again.